Here's a little bit of history coming alive with the replica ships Nina and Pinta docked at Harborside Place in Jupiter, Florida. This is looking at the Pinta, a full-size replica of Columbus's ship. To its right, we have a view of the Nina. Both ships have a dark black color that comes from the pine tar that acted as a natural water resistant. Yeah. But any time they had to make a joint, join wood, you know, they'd make notches, lengthen the joints. Ah, uh, so yes, I see. Joinery. That's where the term comes in. We don't hear it much anymore. Right. So are those joined with some kind of a glue or tar or anything? Uh, yeah, they, they used some glue, and of course, they used a lot of this. In other words, they'd notch and then put wood pegs. Wood pegs. Okay. Here we're looking from the Pinta over towards the Nina. This is standing on the upper deck of the Pinta and looking up at all the rigging. Okay, so you catch it. 
So yeah, you just wrap it around the base of this and okay. then over the top uh -huh. too. Okay. So, and once you go there, you pull a little loop through the big loop. Mm -hmm. And then oh. this is your ball on fire right yeah, here. Yeah. It's on the front, so it's back. Yeah. Pull it that way. It makes so much more sense when you do it slowly. <laughs> 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 so, that's pretty cool. And, um, yeah, do you guys know why uh, boat speed is measured in knots at all? Something to do with the line. Something to do with the line, <laughs> absolutely. So um, basically knots are before and before miles for sure, before the concept of miles even existed. Just taking a line like so, you know, I got that and just pulling that. <laughs> so now you have these series of overhand knots. Well, each knot would have been about um, 45 feet apart. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And so <clears throat> they're about 45 feet apart. What you do is you take a piece of wood, you tie it to the end of it, and you throw it off the side of the ship. Over a period of minute, these knots are going to start being dragged behind the ship from the wood. And then what you do is you pull it up. And you can see that you are doing five knots right here. Yeah. Each knot equals one mile and a fifteenth of a mile per hour. So if you're doing six knots, you're doing about seven miles per hour. So, so six, seven, twelve, four. Again, the upper deck of the Pinta. Here at the waterline, we can really see the pine tar that again was used for water resistance. Both of these ships were constructed in Brazil by shipwrights who are still using and familiar with the techniques from the 15th century. Looking up at the stern of the Nina. I see. And uh, they could be under that, get out of rain, get, not get stepped on when they slept. Okay. That's about it. Wow. As long as they're out in the open. Yeah. So how big was the crew? How many? 24 on this uh, ship. Oh, I see. And this one is the, the Pinta. Nina. This is Nina. Uh, Nina. That's a Pinta. The okay. Nina was a little bit smaller. Yeah. It's about yeah. five foot smaller than the original ship. I see. Did they have enough provisions? Uh, or yeah, did? They, yeah, absolutely. They had a year's worth of provisions, is what Columbus put on. Oh, I see. So they had plenty of provisions. And how long was the actual trip? Do you... uh, 33 days. The first one was 33 days. Well, it doesn't sound too bad, but I, I bet they were well, pretty uh, concerned at yeah, some point. Yeah, the crew was ready to mutiny on day 30. 30. They wanted to go back to Spain because they didn't think they were going to find any land. And then okay. Columbus negotiated with him and said, look, give me three more days. If we don't see land, I'll turn around and take you back home. And unfortunately, after about a little over two days, the land showed up. So wow. we would have never heard of Columbus if yes. he yes. had mutinied on him. Wow. Around. So he got lucky. He was Very interesting. San Salvador is what they saw, the first land they saw. Okay. Great. 
they said there are no plans to build the Santa Maria because it can't navigate the shallow ports that these boats go to. So this is where all the steering was done? Yes sir, with the tiller here. Uh, and we still steer with that today. A lot of people would imagine a steering wheel being on board a ship like yeah. this, but it wasn't invented yet. So. Okay, okay. And since that's back here, there wasn't really any space for the crew. Uh, that's why even if it's raining or just really hot outside, they're all stuck out there on the deck. Have you ever tried turning it yourself? Do you, yeah, is that's it, how we steer the ship. Is it difficult or? No, it's, it's all leverage. It's just pretty easy to handle. Oh, okay, okay. Even though you're pushing 1,200 pounds around, it's uh, pretty well balanced. But I would think in a storm or a lot of choppy seas it would be yeah, tough, rough. wouldn't it? Um, in that case, I'll just kind of ride it out and then strain it out once the wave goes back. I see, okay, I, okay. I don't want to try and keep it yeah. there. Yeah. Some of our crew do that, but then the next day they complain about these bruises <laughs> on their side. Like, well. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Great, yeah. interesting. It has salt packed up along the top of the deck. Oh, I um, see. So right below that board on the inside. That way when the water gets in through the, the decking and the side of the hull, it would rinse that salt down the sides. So okay. Up, uh, hey, thanks for showing the little model there. I didn't even see that. Very cool. Looking here at the upper deck of the Nina, for some reason they wouldn't allow people to go up above there. 